Hello guys, welcome to another Magic Tuesday show. Today, um, I'm here in the studio with Warda and Hassan and Yasin. Yes, I have a lot of people in my studio today. So guys, today we are going to talk about uh, Black Magic Ursa Studio Viewfinder. This unit right here and uh, what it does and how important it can be when you have uh, the any Ursa camera, any Black Magic Ursa camera, be it uh, Ursa Mini, Ursa 4.6K, Ursa Broadcast, yeah, the Ursa model cameras. So with me today, I have um, some units here. I have the Black Magic Ursa Broadcast camera with me right here. I have a Fujinon zoom lens uh, because the Ursa camera has a B4 mount. So I have a B4 lens, Fujinon. I also have a head box, V-mount battery. So I'm going to use my camera with a battery with a V-mount battery. Guys, this camera does not come with this battery plate attached to it, so you have to buy it separately and then have it attached at the back of your camera. So I have mine already attached. I'm going to use this V-mount battery. And I also have the direct power for the camera just in case anything happens. I don't trust Yasin that much. So um, let me take you through the features of the Ursa Studio Viewfinder first. Yes, so here is the unit. It's a bit heavy, not very heavy for me. <laughs> yes, so let's talk about the physical features of this unit right here. The first visible thing on this unit is the hood. This is the sun hood. People call it shed, depending on how you want to call it, but it protects uh, that extra light from every other angle from getting on the screen so that you get your feed exactly as it is, on, as it is coming from the camera. Yes, so this hood right here is detachable. You can have it on or have it off with these uh, two knobs at the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to loosen this and then just detach it. I have to put it on my table first. Yeah. So it's as simple as that. You can have it detached or you can have it attached. And also it's adjustable at the edges. You see that angle? So you can adjust it uh, with this angle. I'm not going to have this on right now. So I'll have it just right there. I wanted to show you that this part is detachable. And we have several menu buttons on this monitor. We have um, the menu knob it's not a button for the menu itself it's a knob so you can go through the menu when i power it on we'll go through that and then we have back button these are buttons we have back f1 f2 and f3 these are functions whereby you can assign whatever function quick functions you want to have you have to you want to have access to with this button so that let's say you want to have um, focus assist or you want to have um, anything else uh, camera display on your screen you just have those functions assigned here so that it can be quick for you just press them and have um, and modify the functions we have an on off switch and then on this other end we just have controls for the uh, what is it called visibility of the screen so we have brightness contrast and peaking all these controls only affect how you visualize the screen it does not affect whatever source it is that is coming to the screen so sometimes you are in a um, very bright place and you want to increase to adjust the brightness of the screen itself you can use this knob you can adjust the contrast you can adjust the peaking and we have also uh, this I, I can call them knobs, yes. So with this one, you're able to adjust the angle. When you have it mounted on your camera, uh, you can loosen this two. We have two of them, this side and this side. So you can have it tilted at an angle when you have this loose. I'm going to tighten those first. And this is the shoe. This is whereby you attach to your camera. It comes with another plate. Oh God, I forgot to take that. Yes, open that box. You give me that. It's just at the top so that I can. Yes. So this is what goes on top of the camera. And then once you have this screwed on the camera, you can have this just sliding. You can have this unit just sliding and then you lock and unlock like any other shoe. Yeah, like that. So right now it's locked. You want to release it, you just press this button right here and 
you release it. And we also have the knobs to adjust the angle as well at the bottom. It shows you lock and unlock and unlock. And also something else, we have this big plastic, this big white plastic uh, material right here. This is for tally. When you have your camera, when you have this monitor attached to your camera, you are able to tell if your source is on preview or program as a camera person with this tally light, light um, illuminating either red or green. So green is on preview mode or red is on program mode. So let's say it's being used in a studio, in a very big studio. So it's big and it's easy for someone to identify which camera is on program as let's say for the anchors, they know where, which camera to look at at what specific moment because the light is quite big and it's uh, it lights also very well. Uh, I don't have a switcher here today. Let me hope I'll be able to light that. If I won't be able to do that, I owe you one. So uh, this, the unit also comes with um, tally indicators. If you have several cameras, we have 20 of them. You have cameras, let's say five of them in a studio, some people seven of them in a studio, and uh, someone might just get confused on what camera is theirs. Let's say you have a guest, you tell the guest camera one is for you or camera two. They don't know, they won't know which camera to look at if it doesn't have the indicator on. Sometimes we go to an extent of physically labeling them, writing on a paper, camera one, camera two. So with this um, Ursa Studio Viewfinder, you don't need to go manual. We have this, you just slide it here and then, okay, did I put it? Okay, so you have to slide it here and then you have your camera already labeled camera one or any other uh, template, camera two to 20. I think I've exhausted everything physically on this unit. I'm going to connect it to my camera. I'll show you the ports that you need to have these cables connected and we'll see the controls as well. So let me have, first of all, my lens attached to the camera. Yeah. So this is the before lens and have to be careful with this one it's not a toy yes there we go now when you once you have this you have a very heavy baby right here I'll just have it stay on the table for now then I'm going to have my V mount headbox V mount battery there I'm almost done with assembling this thing right here so I'm not going to attach the viewfinder on this camera right now but I'm just going to connect it we have these two cables uh, one is for power and one is for video so we have these ports you might be wondering which port do I connect to because also black magic cameras have a lot of SDI connectors we have three of them at the back here then we have this one right here so there's SDI out here and SDI out here. We have these 12 volts. So this is where you connect your Ursa Studio Viewfinder. I'll have this SDI there first and then I can have my power connected. Yeah, everything is in place. Now, do I have my lens cap on? No, it's not on. I have to make sure everything is okay and neat on my table. Now I can power on my camera. And then once my camera comes on, I'll be able to power. Yes, my camera is on. Let me just get something first. Yeah. My camera is on. Now I, I'm able to power my monitor, the Ursa Studio Viewfinder. And there we go. This is the feed, the live feed we are having on the camera. You can see that. You can zoom out, zoom in. Yeah. So um, all this information you are seeing on this monitor, you can also access it from the LCD of the camera. But why do you need to have this? Because it's a seven inch screen. So it's much bigger compared with the LCD that comes with the camera. And it's much more visible. Uh, compared to the small LCD on the camera. Uh, I'm going to take you through the functions. Now we'll just have a menu pressed in the knob. I press the, the knob in, you can press it again. 
then we have display shortcuts setup cursors so we have different controls that you are able to adjust for display is only what you want to use on the display on the display we have zebra zebra is uh, an indicator that always shows you when a place is overexposed or underexposed you get these uh, black black lines running through the white overexposed area so it looks kind of like a zebra that's why i think they call it zebra uh, zebra now right now it's off i can turn it on and just press the knob again then we have the false color guides you can have guides off it's very very important to have the guides off because of uh, framing as well so once i turn the guides on you're able to see the nine uh, nine box grid on my screen and then you can have zoom audio meters you're able to view audio meters on the screen so sometimes it's also he helpful if uh, sometimes you find that people yes are wearing headphones but you're not able to tell if the level is uh, actually as per what you wanted to record so you can be hearing something but you're not able to tell what levels they are if you don't have your audio meters on so it's very important you can have audio meters on for your screen then we have red channel green channel and blue channel for the monitor you can turn them on and then you can exit i can exit or i can go to these other uh, settings let me just exit that first i want to show you the grid so here is the nine uh, box grid you're able to place your subject correctly if you're doing any type of framing uh, we have other information on this uh, monitor this studio view finder yes just allow me to call it a monitor because it has a seven inch display so all i'm seeing right now is a monitor for me we have camera one it's indicated it, this is camera one the resolution you are actually on is 1080p with 25 frames then we are at shutter speed of 1 over 50 and the iris is not indicated right here because we are not controlling the iris from the camera the iris we are con controlling it from the lens then we have gain it, right now it's at zero decibels and weight balance 5600 and also it indicates to you the amount of uh, power charge right now i have my battery connected i'm able to tell that from it has a battery indicator right here that can show you if you're almost running out of battery yes if i also have direct power it will show you the type of uh, the type of uh, current you're receiving is it dc yeah and i don't know what else to show you on this okay just I have to go back now shortcuts there I had explained about the F1 F2 and F3 buttons so on shortcuts you're able to um, assign this F1 F2 F3 on this monitor they're assigned as F1 zoom F2 guides F3 cursor so if I press right now I have guides if I press F2 I might okay there we go the guides are off because this is a shortcut that we have for the guides I don't have to go all the way into my menu for me to be able to put the guides on and off very very handy and very helpful and then we have setup you can have front tally brightness this is the tally we're talking about so depending on where you are if definitely cameras are always advised to be on a darker area so you want your tally very bright so that your anchor or your ho or your host or your guest to be able to identify that camera is what is on program or this camera is what is coming up what camera am i supposed to be facing at what time yes so we have the setup here of the tally and then we have focus assist what color do you want focus assist let me try to focus on something right now it's on red lines okay let me just exit this first again okay exit first try focus try focus on that okay let me check if the focus assist is on first on the menu because i'm supposed to see some red lines focus focus yeah zebra false color guides zoom yes guys i'm trying to find that focus and 
I don't think my camera is getting much focus of the shot I've just taken. That's why I, I can't get the focus assist. Might be the distance I have my camera placed, but again, you'll see some red, green, or blue lines, depending on what color you have selected. Then you know what area of your frame is in focus. So it does not record that red, green, or blue color. Rather, it just helps you to identify what areas of your shot are in focus. And I think that's it. We have this small light here. It's not quite visible, but when you're recording from your camera, when you have a card, the camera has a C first card slots. I'll just turn it so that you can see. It will actually indicate here that your camera is recording. So let me put this down carefully and show you the card slots on the camera. Yeah, there we go. So we have the SD C first slot. So we have two SD card slot and two C first slots. As well, we have a USB port right there. So very many options for recording whatever it is you're capturing on your camera. Yes, guys, I don't know if you have any questions. Abu, do we have any questions? As usual, guys, you can ask any questions while we are live. And don't remember, if you want to join us live, you can always comment or you can get in touch with us. Then we'll be able to go live with you so that you can give us your black magic experience. Abu, do we have any comments, questions? No? All right. So, um, guys, if you have any questions after these live sessions, you can leave your questions on the comment sections and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Also, as usual, if you want to purchase any black magic product, you can visit our website that is www.highwayav.co.ke or you can give us a call if the information on the website is not sufficient for you. Our number is plus two five four seven nine six twenty six twenty twenty eight. As well, just walk into our office. If you're in Nairobi, if you're in South B area or if you're in CBD, you want to pay us a visit. Our office is located in South B at Trans Towers. Upper ground floor, office number six. We are always welcoming guests, so we'll be happy and glad to see you. Until next Tuesday, with a whole new magic. <laughs>